when we decided to become an interdisciplinary school, an interdisciplinary project-based school, there was nowhere to go to figure out how to do this work. And so we were at a crossroads. Either we say, oh, well, there's nowhere to go. Nobody's doing this well. Let's, let's let it go. Or we figure out how to do it. Our summer institute is really not, it's an opportunity to get core subject teachers and career technical education teachers together in the same room with large amounts of uninterrupted time to develop interdisciplinary units. Okay, when they're leaving Algebra 1, what is the stuff that I know, no matter who taught them Algebra 1, this is the stuff they're supposed to be doing. So they look at the current data of the students coming in, and once they've identified the benchmark standards, they're going to write assessments in their content areas first so that they know what it is that they're teaching to mastery. Um, we essentially begin with the end in mind, and we think about, okay, the purpose of this project is to get students to demonstrate uh, mastery with certain concepts. What do each of us need to do in order to get them to that point. And then we, we sit back and we all talk through our standards and we explain them to each other because I don't really understand the history standards, the math standards. So those content area experts explain them to me and we start talking about natural ways that those standards can overlap. So this will take care of the creative part of the website, them actually creating the crime story. Okay. Um, we'll be talking about flashbacks and foreshadowing and all the things that authors The do. Crime Time Project is basically a forensics project and basically they have to solve who may have committed the crime using the content areas that the 10th grade is in to make these determinations. So this is, you know, this is my third year being a full-time teacher you know, in the classroom and up until now I've worked collaboratively with other teachers on various things but we've never really done this level of team planning across the curriculum, across the content areas. It's storytelling here, okay. DNA here, um, geometric, well yeah, it's like... I think that this allows me an opportunity to um, gain some, some perspective and gain, gain some sort of exposure to what my colleagues are doing, what's working for them, and it helps me um, improve my own practice because I'm not in isolation. <laughs> we are expecting, is, is this something that we're as a team agreed upon, that we are expecting big picture wise out of media that they are designing their own website that follows the general our schema of this that? Will be there. For myself and Jenna, it being our first year of teaching, learning how to teach for the first time or plan for the first time, I'm learning about forensics and I'm learning about math and I'm learning about all of these things and it's kind of it's exciting. So where should we begin? I think we have to start with Luke's stuff because well, this is the most sequential out of everyone's. Okay. At about week seven in intermediate I'm hitting the stuff they need. So about close to halfway through the semester. You know and, and finally you know this end product starts to take shape and we start moving backwards okay, well, what do I need to do in my content area class in order to make sure that the students are meeting my standards and learning what they need to know in order to create this product? What we had discussed initially is that is getting all the content, all of it, taught by the four-winner four break. It is more work. It is a completely different type of work than being in a school where you punch in at 8 in the morning, you leave at 2.30, you choose everything you want, you shut your door. In an environment like this, you are working harder, you're working smarter, you're working, you're working in a different way. We have several questions about how forensic science actually works in the field. Um, you know, your role as a detective, I understand. Kind of stuff. Okay. Um, fibers. Fibers. Like and hair. Okay. These here are kind of what you're talking about almost, but these are, uh, this is for DNA. And what they are is they're little squares with an adhesive. So maybe... My name is Troy Holiday. I'm a detective with the uh, San Diego Unified School District Police Department. There's a lot for these kids to learn in this class in a, in a four or five month period. Asking kids to do real world things naturally requires them to go beyond what they know. You have to believe that engaging children in the content and making the content real and relevant 
is, is positive to learning. Um, how much of what remains there is what we see in the project? Directly in the project? Like, we, like I was asking you earlier. To, to make the connection? Making the connection, but also like, they're gonna need it in order for the project to be successful. And then ultimately these, these projects, if the students hear their biology teach, teacher talking about the project and their English teacher and their history teacher talking about the project, there's so much just enthusiasm that is put across to the students about this, they, they care about these projects. If I didn't have the support of a grade level team uh, in project-based curriculum, I'd probably be fighting to keep my head above water right now. I think teams of teachers, especially project-based teams of teachers, you really need people who truly believe in the philosophy. I don't think that people who want to be isolated in a classroom and close the door and choose the curriculum based on what they like fit in the project-based learning world.